I'm Jessica. I'm a chemistry major at Cal Poly, class of 2016, and today we're going to be demonstrating a titration technique. Today we will be focusing on how to run an ideal titration. First, take the initial burette reading by reading from the bottom of the meniscus. Now that our burette is set up, we will prepare our solution to be titrated. We will now add an indicator, in this case, two drops of phenethylene, that will turn the solution pink once the acid is neutralized. The stir bar should be stirring not too vigorously because a loss of sample may occur. If the stir bar is stirring too slowly, the sample may be under titrated. So make sure the stir bar is stirring the solution steadily. And make sure you rinse the walls of the flask with about 15 milliliters of deionized water so that all the analyte and indicator are in solution. To begin your titration, turn the stopcock from the closed horizontal position to the open vertical position as shown. Enough titrant should be added to get near the endpoint. This allows an accurate titration. To do so, add the titrant drop by drop. Leaving time between the drops is best in calculating the closeness to the endpoint. It's best to count how long the indicator lasts between drops. Rinse the flask with a few milliliters of deionized water between drops to ensure all the sample remains in solution, because minimal splashing may occur. Don't worry about putting DI water in the sample because DI water does not affect the multimal ratio of the titrant and your sample. Once the sample is very near the endpoint, an indicator lasting for about 5 seconds, half drops come in handy. These are useful because of their precision and minimize over titrating the sample. To release half a drop, carefully open the stopcock just enough to form half a droplet, then quickly close the stopcock. Rinse the tip of the burette with DI water to put the half drop in solution. The endpoint is reached once a pink color appears and lingers for about 10 seconds. Once your titration has reached the endpoint, your sample should become clear again. Read the final burette volume to determine how much titrant you used. Here are some reminders to consider when doing your titration. Don't forget to add your indicator. Make sure the star bar is stirring at a constant rate. Don't forget to record your initial and final volumes on the burette. Running a quick titration to estimate the volume of the titrant needed is helpful in speeding up the process. Good luck on your titration, guys. You got this.